Cascadia methane gas flux in the Northeast Pacific. A new study quantifies. We're talking about the Cascadia subduction zone. They found just about 2,000 streams, that is, plumes, seeping methane gas. And they believe that this also could be a sign of impending potential earthquakes because these plumes are on fault lines. This is by Ocean Networks Canada, University of Victoria, Ocean Networks Canada, physics.org. New study quantifies a natural flux of methane gas in the Northeast Pacific. Beneath the ocean floor, bacteria produce methane gas that is regularly released through sediment and into the seawater as bubble streams. While these gas flares have been observed on continental margins around the world, until now there has been no systematic study of all available gas flow observations data to estimate the total amount of methane escaping from the seafloor. These data are important for the global inventory of carbon and also for analyzing the uptake of carbon dioxide, that's ocean acidification, and its impact on climate change. In a new study recently published in Nature Communications, researchers in Germany and Canada have analyzed all available historic and recent gas bubble data from the Cascadia margin of British Columbia and Washington and Oregon. Led by GeoMars Dr. Michael Riedel and his local colleagues in Kiel, along with researchers at Marm Center for Marine Environmental Sciences and Department of Geosciences at University of Bremen, Ocean Networks Canada and the University of Victoria, the study used ship-based acoustic surveys of the water column as well as near seafloor acoustic and visual data. They gathered, they gathered over 1,100 vent sites with over 430 gas flow estimates for the entire Cascadia offshore margin. ONC scientists and Martin Shearwath and Martin Heisman contributed to the research by providing ONC data, including ship-based acoustic data, underwater video and seafloor multi-beam sonar data, as well as helping to interpret and statistically summarize the data and writing the, the manuscript. Quote, with so many ship surveys and relevant data sets already available across the Cascadian margin, we just had to go ahead with the study and reveal where all the undiscovered vents were and how much the total gas flux was likely to be, said ONC's Sherwath. Since 2010, ONC has deployed multi-beam sonar instruments at Clayocott Slope to study plumes of methane bubbles escaping from the seafloor. Previous research has monitored the bubble fluctuations at this site, but it's particularly impossible to observe the entire margin's methane activity at all times in order to obtain a gas flux estimate for the whole region the existing observations were extrapolated in space and time to estimate gas activity over the entire margin, even at places where no data exists. Shirwa said, while this estimate has large uncertainties, the research suggests that for every square meter of seafloor, about one gram of methane is bubbling up every year. This amounts to 100,000 tons of methane escaping the sediments into the ocean in offshore Cascadia every year. The existing observations at the Cascadia margin indicate that all of the gas is dissolving in the ocean, which means it's not escaping into the atmosphere where methane would act as a powerful greenhouse gas. Rather, its ocean dis dissolution is exacerbated ocean acidification. And researchers document widespread methane seeps off the Oregon coast. Mark Floyd, Oregon State University, reports on phys.org. For the past two years, scientists from Oregon State University and NOAA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, surveyed the Pacific Northwest nearshore region 
mapping sites where underwater bubble streams signify methane gas is being released from the seafloor. This is the Cascadia subduction zone area. And what they found is eye-opening. Since the first evidence of underwater methane was discovered in the late 1980s, only about 100 seep sites had been identified along northwest coast through 2015. They often were discovered by accident when fishermen would spot anomalies on their fish finders that turned out to be acoustic reflections of the bubbling methane gas. But over the past two years, the scientists, aided by new sonar technology on the uh, exploration vessel EV Nautilus, owned and operated by the Ocean Exploration Trust, have purposefully gone seeking evidence of underwater methane and have expanded the total number of offshore emission sites to be a whopping 1,000 locations. It's not yet clear whether the methane presents an opportunity for a new source of energy or potentially serious environmental threat, but for now the researchers want to map the distribution of the sites and conduct research on the, comp the composition and sources of this gas. They believe they will discover new methane seeps this summer when they analyze several research vessels, they utilize several research vessels to conduct additional mapping of the northwest coast, that is, of course, the Cascadia subduction zone area. Using this new sonar system, we've mapped only about 38% of the seafloor and about 25% of the water column data from Washington to Northern California said Susan Merle, an Oregon State Oceanographer who works out of OSU's Hatfield Marine Center, a Science Center in Newport, Oregon. No doubt, she says, there are more sites out there and we hope to find them. The researchers will embark on another expedition this June aboard the EV Nautilus and use a remotely operated vehicle during daytime to collect samples of gas, methane hydrate, seep water, fauna and rocks right where the methane is exist, existing, is exiting the seafloor. And investigating uh, the, these samples will help tell the story of the origin of the seeping methane and its impact on life at these sites and in the overlying oceans. And during the night, they will do extensive mapping of areas not yet surveyed in an attempt to locate more methane sweeps. Uh, the researchers will make video of the ROV dives available to viewers at uh, https nautiluslive.org. The potentially vast storehouse of this potent greenhouse gas could provide an intriguing energy source, but it's widely distributed and may not be economical to extract. This is what Robert Embley noted, OSU geophysicist who spent much of his career with NOAA's Pacific Maritime Marine Environmental Laboratory. Quote, it's very tricky and potentially hazardous to attempt to extract methane, Embley said. Mining could have all sorts of implications. When methane appears as a hydrate, it can look like a chunk of ice or snow, but when you try to bring it into the surface, it immediately begins to decompose. And in addition to hydrates, we found hundreds of bubble streams, but their origin and scopes remain to be seen. In their survey, the researchers found that together with some free gas, such as the methane below an ocean depth of 500 meters, or that's 1,600 feet, is found as solidified hydrates. And above 500 meters, it usually appears as a gas in bubble streams. One question we'd like to address is whether hydrates are formed by methane gas seeping out of the earth and meeting the cold, deep seawater, or the bubbles we're seeing a result of hydrates breaking down and releasing the gas. This is what John Upton said. He's a chemical oceanographer with NOAA PMEL. So just how much methane is off the northwest coast is uncertain, and researchers say, but it appears to be a lot, and it could cause potential environmental problems. One concern is what could happen during a major Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Emily pointed out, quote, it would add more permeability to the seafloor, add more pathways for the methane to escape, and increase the potential for its release to the atmosphere. 
So what's happening with all the methane that's bubbling up out of the seafloor and into the ocean waters? Tamara Baumberger, the researcher for the Cooperative Institute for Marine Resource Studies, a joint OSU NOAA Center base, a base at Hatfield, has sampled some of the bubbles from the site and found different chemical signatures that helped the researchers pinpoint the origin of the methane. Some of it was hermogenic, thermogenic, the result of organic bacteria like dead plankton being heated up and transformed into the gas. Some was biogenic, in which the organic material was altered by microbial activity. Quote, when methane is near is in, in, in the seawater, it often is oxidized into carbon dioxide by microbial activity, which can keep much of it from reaching the atmosphere, Baumberger said. The downside, of course, is that the newly formed CO2 is also a problem, and it can both reach the atmosphere and increase ocean acidification. Baumberger said that methane release into the shallow water can get into the atmosphere more quickly because the bacteria don't have enough time to oxidize it. However, the researchers said are sure are unsure how many methane seeps lie in the shallow water, which they define as less than about 150 meters. Quote, we know very little about methane seep distribution in shallow water because it's very difficult to map there, end quote. This is what Merrill said, and continuing to explain, quote, but everywhere we look for seeps, we find them. There's one of our, uh, this, it, it's one of our goals this June to get a better handle on how pre prevalent the shallow seeps might be. Always use Laverne Calm was one of the first to discover methane seeps off the coast in the 1980s, and a decade later, researchers documented apple methane uh, at Hydrate uh, Ridge off Oregon coast. University of Washington scientist Paul Johnson mapped many of the Washington locations, and OSU's Marta Torres found more hydrates of the Hesita Bank in 1998. Beginning in 2016, though, the search began in earnest and the researchers found a large aggregation of methane sweep sites off the Coquille Bank near Coos Bay, as well as in the Astoria Canyon, which is full of them, Merle said. Wherever we find canyons, we seem to find methane. And they also discovered methane sweeps off Newport, Oregon, in, what the, in water that was only 40 meters deep. Some of methane samples, including traces of helium, which are, is only found in the mantle, the researchers noted. The, this search uh, raised some more interesting questions. Baumberger said, how common is mantle gas in the Cascadia margin methane sweeps? How stable is the system during an earthquake? Will a, warning, a warming ocean lead to increase in the release of methane? What are, we're trying to do is to identify how much is out there, and establish a baseline. Then we can address these and other scientific questions. This is by, provided by Oregon State University. It's on FIS.org. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece. In Kapota, and we also help 
the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.